today we're going to talk a little bit about supplements. We're not going to talk a lot about supplements because I'm not a big supplement guy. A lot of people ask me about supplements, the food you eat, getting proper sleep, and being consistent in the gym. Often those things are just so overlooked. Really just being consistent is your number one thing. When people start to work out and they and they jump on supplements really fast. It's one of the first questions I get. What supplements should I be taking? Really, it supplements the name, right? They're supposed to supplement your diet. So if your diet is missing something, you can supplement it with these things. You shouldn't need to do that, though. If you are eating well, getting all your nutrition in, you will get everything that supplements can give you. And you get it in a better way. You get it in a more whole food way. That's more important. But anyways, let's talk about a couple, okay? I'll only ever recommend something if I try it, I saw results, those results were measurable and I was clearly better off because of the supplements I was taking. Otherwise, I won't really recommend it. Most I don't really recommend it. But one that I think is safe enough to take is glutamine. Glutamine uh, is a well-known supplement. Your body, it's a non-essential amino acid. You, your body can produce it, but if you take five milligrams, I believe the dose is a day extra, that can be beneficial. It was recommended post-surgery, depending on the surgery, oftentimes too. If the muscles were broken down or you were cut into, glutamine helps repair muscles. So it's good even post-surgery. So as a supplement, that is one that I will say, I've taken it, I've gained some benefit from it before. I don't take it on a very regular basis these days. But I have taken it and seen some results. So that's one that I will recommend. It's safe enough. It's cheap. It's a decent one to take. I just recommended it to somebody recently who got into a car accident. I was trying to recover from that. Creatine. Oh, my thoughts on creatine. I've been on it and off it about six times. I don't like it. I get a little puffier. You definitely retain water. I definitely weigh more when I do creatine, when I try it. People will say it makes them break out. A lot of any study you read, I don't know why it says this, but the studies say that is not something is related. But sometimes you have all of these people that are like, this is a thing. And then you have people, I don't know if they're trying to manipulate the results or what, but they're like, the ones that study it, they're like, it's not a thing. Just because some people haven't figured out why something happens through a study doesn't mean it's not happening. There are too many people, myself included, that have taken creatine and broke out with the biggest amounts of acne that I've ever had. So creatine definitely, for me, caused that. I was even on it again recently because, man, you can't be in the workout world and not find a paper that says creatine is beneficial. So I was like, fine, I'll try it again. Broke out with acne, no muscle gain, no increases. And my, really what I'm looking for is strength. Maybe a little size increase because it makes you retain water, but that's about it. Creatine got popularized, as far as I can remember, creatine got popularized when a lot of baseball players are being accused of taking anabolic steroids. So this happens to supplements sometimes, and it happened to creatine. These guys came out and said, oh, you got me. I'm on creatine, bro. Man, it's such good stuff. And so then everyone runs out and they like just eat this stuff up. It wasn't the creatine. It was the anabolic steroids. I think I talked about this in another podcast more focused on steroids. But so creatine doesn't really do much. It a lot of studies would suggest otherwise. I don't care. I just have, it's in so many things now. It's even in energy drink, as if you can do it like that. It doesn't work like that. You need to be taking it consistently for it to do anything as far as the studies would say. So to put it in all kinds of drinks, just because we think it's going to make help us, it's just marketing. Maybe it gives you a placebo effect, but that's probably about it as far as putting it in a sports drink or something. Um, just a little side note on that too. Sometimes that happens with supplements. So B12 was a big one, right? It's in so many different things. You'll see it on cans. It's in sports drinks or energy drinks as well. Because studies have come out that said it gives you increased energy. If you read the studies say, if you were deficient in B12 and you got it injected, those were the people found to have boosts in energy. The people that were deficient and took it orally did not have a boost in energy. Most of us aren't deficient though. Most of us have plenty of B12. So putting it in a rock star and giving it to you on a daily basis is not going to help that. So when you read the studies, 
that's where the answer is at. And that's where you find out how to really dose this thing to where it's going to be effective. But people don't care. They, someone sees a study and it's like B12 increases energy and they're like, oh my God. And they run out and they start, and then you, there's all these other people talking about it. B12 gives energy, whatever. Look at the cans for any energy drink. You're going to find B12 on it and a lot of other vitamins that maybe they found if you inject it and you're low, you get a boost, but otherwise they don't give you a boost. And especially most of us probably are not deficient in those things. So you have to make sure you read the study, make sure you know what you're talking about, you know, how to dose something correctly. So yeah, B12 is funny one, but that's how you're supposed to get it. And that's how you're supposed to get energy from it. If you're deficient, it has to be injected. Vitamin D, next one. So vitamin D, I will easily recommend, especially if you live in an area where it snows or it's often dark out, rains a lot. If you live more Northern, as I do right now, I've never been deficient in vitamin D in my life until I moved to Wyoming. Then about a year, maybe two years in, I broke my first bone because my vitamin D was low. If your vitamin D is low, your body will not absorb calcium into the, your bones won't absorb calcium. So all the time as you're doing stuff, especially if you like sports, whatever, you're getting little tiny micro fractures in your bones all the time. And that's fine. That's just part of life. You're supposed to have enough calcium and vitamin D in your body circulating just to where the, the, if you have enough vitamin D, calcium will absorb into the bones and your bones will heal. So you're playing sports, you're getting banged around. Your bones are getting broken down, but they're building back up all the time. And then I moved to Gillette, Wyoming. I forget the number. It's like 31 or 32, whatever that means. If your vitamin D is up to 32, let's just say your bones will absorb calcium. Mine was 12. And I don't know when it dipped below 32, but it was low. And I would get a little micro fractures as I always do. I'm sure you don't even notice them. And then one day I slammed my foot down really hard. It broke in two spots and it wasn't healing. It kept on turning purple. And that's when I got my vitamin D checked and it was 12. And I was like, oh, okay. I got to up my vitamin D because I've never lived in an area so Northern where we don't get enough sun around here. And I never had a deficiency in vitamin D until I moved here and then broke a bone in two spots. I got my first broken bone. But vitamin D, you should get it checked every now and then. It has a direct correlation to testosterone. And I checked this myself. So I started taking, I took vitamin D when I broke my bone, but then bone of my foot. Then I started taking it because someone said it had a correlation with testosterone. So I started taking it and I checked my vitamin D and my testosterone. I was taking a certain amount of vitamin D and my testosterone went from like 427 to 500. And then I upped my levels of vitamin D, testosterone went higher. Up my vitamin D, testosterone went higher. As far as how much you don't want to take, don't overdo it, especially if you live in a sunny area, you probably don't need it. A lot of places you can get it checked without a doctor's order for 40 bucks, get your vitamin D drawn, make sure it's at a healthy level. I took up to about 30,000 I use a day for a while. I take about 20,000 now, and that's where I stopped. I don't think I need any more than that. I'm staying at about 20,000. But every time I upped it, my testosterone levels went up. And if you took, I believe it was 60,000 for three months, 60,000 a day for three months, that's when people started to have problems. If you stay well under that, Get it checked every here and there. You shouldn't have an issue with it, but that is one I would definitely recommend, especially if you're low. It helps with your mood. It helps with testosterone. It just helps you to feel better all the time. We are meant to be in the sun. We're meant to have sunlight hitting our skin. So if you can do that, great. If you need a supplement, then definitely do that. And that's pretty much it as far as stuff I recommend. Now, again, I will test stuff on myself. So I am currently taking... This is Fidoja Agrestis. I'm trying this. I'm not advocating it. I'm trying this, but this is what I do. I, if I see something, I won't take anything like synthetic steroids or whatever, but if I see something that's like a plant supplement, I'll try it. If it says to it boost testosterone, this is supposed to stimulate luteinizing hormone, which helps your body to produce more testosterone. I'm also funding that with this thing called Tung, Tung at Ali right here. I'm trying this one out too. This just an old is plant-based, uh, something that's been taken or just known to increase. Essentially, I think it was just like a fertility thing for men, but it boosts testosterone by about 300 points when taken on a regular basis. So one of those things I'm willing to try it out. So I'm trying it again, currently not advocating it, but I'm trying it out. I got that from Dr. Andrew Huberman. So I'm trying it. I've been on it about two months. I don't feel a huge strength increase, but I haven't checked my levels yet. We'll see pretty soon. If it, if my testosterone is higher than it was the last time I had it checked. 
that's a big deal to me. It's the other thing I just want to touch on real quick. Testing stuff on yourself and not just reading studies, okay? Testing stuff out on yourself is huge. So recently, I, just to drive this point home, I tried hitting the sauna because the sauna is supposed to increase, what was it, growth hormone by, depending on how long you stay in there, by two times, three times, four times, it increases growth hormone for a couple of hours. Now, if you, which is, that's a big deal. And if you work out first, then go hit the sauna. It's like a 20 fold increase for, I believe three hours. So huge for recovery, but I wasn't recommending it quite yet. Cause I, I want to test it on myself. That sounds really legit. You see all these studies where growth hormones through the roof for a while. That sounds like I should be gaining strength and muscle mass. Great. Let's try this. I had a specific protocol I was going by, followed that as best I could, but I started to get weaker. My wife is doing it too, and she could feel a little bit like she's getting a little bit weaker. I noticed both of our numbers going down as time went on. You have to rehydrate, so we're doing that. And our, and we would we'd work out day one, work out day two, work out day three, which is a short day. And then we hit the sauna on that day. Next day is rest day. So day three after the sauna, you can rehydrate, rest day, rehydrate, back to day one. It took a few rotations of that, rotations of my workout till I started to feel like as we're hitting the sauna consistently, I'm getting weaker. My squats feel heavier. Everything just feels off. I don't feel good. So I don't doubt that there is a 20 fold increase in growth hormone after you work out and hit the sauna. I don't doubt that. I think those studies are correct. But the studies are missing something. They're showing your body having this huge spike in growth hormone. Why? And it makes me have a theory that your body is being broken down like crazy if you work out and then hit the sauna. It's probably really hard on your body, which can be a good thing to stress your body out. That can be a good thing. So it shows that this huge spike in growth hormone, but it makes me go, what's happening? Is it because it's burning other things? Is it like your body's holy crap, we're breaking down too fast, we have to repair? What's happening? There's clearly something missing. You would think that if you externally took growth hormone and just injected it into yourself, you would get more muscle gain and you would get more strength gain, right? And when, and I looked it up just to make sure that growth hormone isn't supposed to be like a height thing when you're growing or <laughs> I just looked it up to make sure what is growth hormone supposed to do? It should have some effects of strength and muscle, but I found the opposite to be true. So that study is, again, it's showing a spike in growth hormone, but what's it missing? What are we not seeing? What's being broken down because I'm weaker as I would do this protocol to hit the sauna and increase growth hormone. Always be looking for new things, always try new things. It's fun to experiment on ourselves and nothing too dangerous, but it's fun to experiment and see what the results are. So I, that's what I've always done. Hit the gym, try some new workouts, try something different and see what the results are. That's always just, you just do that over and over again, but just be, you have to watch out. Sometimes you find things like I found with the sauna and that's okay. You find that out um, and see that it's not actually all that beneficial. It's great. The science found that there was a spike in growth hormone. But it's clearly missing what is breaking down that makes us weaker afterwards. But I'm not saying it's not as bad because there's a lot of other benefits. It's shown to increase longevity. It's shown to be good for cardiac health. It's shown to have so many benefits. So I'm not saying don't hit the sauna. I'm saying when you read a study that shows that growth hormone is increased, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get stronger because that might be happening because your body's fight, fighting to repair because it's being broken down faster than it's repairing. That's all I'm saying. So. Just be careful with that. But lastly, just real quick, I mentioned it in the beginning. I'm not a big supplements guy. I'm not. I'll try things. I'll experiment. I won't do anything like a synthetic testosterone. I won't do anabolic steroids. I'll do things that help boost my testosterone that are plant-based and safe and natural. I'll do stuff like that. If I ever did anabolic steroids again, I would document it. I'd be very open about it. And I would try and show like these are the benefits from it. But then again, I'm sure it would not be good for my heart and other things could be detrimental in some other area. But the biggest thing, you guys, everybody asks me about supplements right off the bat. And I tell everybody, you don't need them. You don't need them. Experiment a little bit, maybe a little vitamin D if you're low, maybe some nutri nutrient if you're low, maybe B12 if you're low, right? But aside from that, sleeping regularly, getting a good night's sleep every night, that's going to boost your hormones more than anything except for a bunch of analog steroids, like $10,000 worth of the liver king was taking, but getting good night's sleep, that's going to be huge, huge for recovery, getting proper nutrition, learning how to cook, learning how to make homemade meals, healthy, whole foods. That's going to be huge and being consistent in the gym. 
being consistent. I know so many people that aren't consistent and they come in there and they like think that I got all these supplements, I'm going to, I'm going to do it this time. And they don't. And they have all these fancy supplements, spend all this money and it goes nowhere. Just get to the gym. Just get there consistently. Keep on chipping away. You'll be fine. Good night's sleep, proper nutrition, consistently hitting the gym with a plan. That's what you need. You need that more than any supplement. And then anything else is just naturally for, natural for you. Plenty of water, sunlight on your skin, all that stuff. Just finding out what the human body wants, essentially, and giving it that in, on the, in the most basic way that you can, in the most basic and natural way that you possibly can. That's what you should, should strive for. Yeah, if you guys have any questions about supplements, hit me up. I usually read about them. I've tried most of them. I've been on and off a ton just to see the effects. But again, I don't find a whole lot of benefit that you can't get from just some good food. But if you have questions, let me know. If you have specific supplement questions, let me know. Hit me up on Facebook, drop me a line, ask me a question. I love hearing stuff like that. I love answering questions. I love helping out. So let me know. All right. Till next time. Thank you guys.